Hello, everyone. My name is Sheng Baozheng, and I am a research scientist at Meta. Today, I will present our efforts on network observability for AI HPC training workflows. In today's talk, I will first talk about the background of the AI HPC training stack. Next, I will show our efforts on providing network observability from two aspects, including building Rocket to provide observability over RDMA network, and using Param benchmark and Chakra ecosystem to understand collective communication behaviors. At the end, I will summarize today's talk with three takeaways. AI HPC collective communications, as known as HPC comms, bridges the broad AI training stack with network for large-scale distributed training. A common architecture of a training stack from top to bottom, a PyTorch workflow which implements various models. Under it, a process group and HPC comms library like Nico. Training workflow based on HPC comms have two main characteristics. First, the communication between GPUs following compute operations uses fixed APIs, known as collectives like Altwell and Allradius. Second, they are iterative, which means the training workflow repeats this iteration many times until the end. At the very bottom of the training stack are different types of training hardware connected with different co-designed AI zone topologies through RDMA networks. To better understand a training job, it is necessary to capture a semantic view from network to workflow. In this talk, I will introduce Rocket to provide observability over RDMA networks and introduce Prime and Chakra to understand collective communications behaviors. Now let's start with RDMA network observability. RDMA enables networked hosts to exchange data in main memory without relying on the processor. In Meta, we built an independent RDMA network for training clusters to scale AI training workloads. One design goal of AI clusters is keeping the GPUs busy. An RDMA network is our pick that makes that possible. Since RDMA is very sensitive to network trouble. Therefore, it can be a key factor affecting training efficiency. Our approach to getting reliable performance is to put relevant information into the hands of job owners. So we need to scale this by exposing high quality information about RDMA network. Since there are a variety of possible regions, that a job might be slow, we need a way to quickly check for networking problems to get the confidence that the network is performing well. Motivated by this need of an easy way to understand RDMA network condition behind training workflows, we propose the Rocket. Rocket is a tool that enables a project view of RDMA network through RDMA hardware counters collection. These metrics can help config and introspect the collective communication behavior across the network switches, NICs, PCIe switches, and GPUs. Rocket associates the job to hardware counters fetched from the host and the switches. On the host, Rocket will collect counters like out-of-sequence rate to measure error impact and pulse duration rate to measure network congestion. On the switches, Rocket will collect both error counters like in-discuss rate and informative counters like total input BPS. This flowchart indicates the methodology of Rocket. First, we integrated a profiling trigger into each training workflow to identify all the jobs that need to be profiled, including failed jobs 
and inefficient jobs. Once a profiling is triggered, Rocket will gather necessary job information. Next, Rocket will build the backend topology of all the hosts and switches involved in a job. We need this step to know all the hardwares that Rocket should go to fetch RDMA metrics. Then Rocket will build a query and save the results into a database. Finally, Rocket builds visualization and does correlation analysis with the return RDMA metrics. Here are several example counters that Rocket uses to identify network issues. Out-of-sequence error measures the amount of packets out of sequence as perceived by Nick. It indicates job performance issue. Nick flaps is another important counter which indicates both hardware and software flaps. Local act timeout measures the number of times that the QPairs act timer is paired at the sender side. It has a high impact and usually causes performance regressions and on occasion job failures. This is an example showing the correlation between the training throughput and out of sequence error. The blue line represents the out of sequence error rate, while the yellow line represents the training throughput. In this job, out of sequence error appears since the very beginning. However, from the green zone we can see, with the drop of auto-sequence error, the training throughput has a big increase. And when the auto-sequence error finally went away, the training throughput became very stable. This example indicates that auto-sequence error can correlate with the performance of a training job. Based on the RDMA metrics collected by Rocket, we build three types of analysis. Analyzing RDMA errors through out-of-sequence, NIC flag, and local timeouts. Analyzing RDMA congestion with pause duration and congestion notification packets handle rate. Analyzing the correlation between RDMA metrics and job performance with timeline view. At the end of Rocket part, I will do a Rocket case study of how to triage networking-related job failures. First, through the Rocket host level error visualization, we notice the host 11 has a big amount of NIC CRC errors, and we suspect that there are some errors there. Then from the timeline charts on the right, we confirmed out-of-sequence error, NIC flap error, and local act timeouts all appeared at the end of the training job which means these errors can account for the job failure. And based on this analysis, we can see some errors on host 11 sneak causes the problem. By now, we have talked about the observability on RDMA networks. Next, I will talk about how to leverage Prime and Chakra to understand collective communication behaviors. There has been a growing demand for collective communication benchmarks for AI training workloads. Towards evaluating, first, network transport and topologies, for example, single hop versus multi hop rocky analysis. Second, communication libraries such as NICO, UCC, and PI. And lastly, PyTorch communication backend. Rerunning the full workload entails compute, comms, and I.O. components and complex interactions between them, making it almost impossible to isolate communication or network effects. Low-level collective communication benchmarks, such as NICO test, have the following limitations. First, these benchmarks don't capture workload communication behavior such as message sizes and sequence of the collective operations. Second, they don't use PyTorch process group, which is used by AI training workloads. Instead, it is based on C++ and uses CUDA or NICO interface directly. Third, limited to one specific communication library. As the name suggests, NICO test only works with NICO and OSU MPI benchmark 
is limited to MPI. We address these limitations with Prime Benchmark. Prime creates common abstractions across platforms to help standardize the benchmarking logic. It uses PyTorch Process Group APIs to provide a portable interface across different communication libraries like Nico MPI and UCC. It supports analyzing the traces collected from the real workload to derive communication patterns. And finally, it replaces the collective communication operations following the order and message size in the trees. In Meta, we now use PyTorch execution trees as one trace implementation. Next, I will describe Prime Benchmark from three aspects, execution trace collection, Prime trace analysis, and Prime replay. Execution trace records the runtime information of a model, such as execution order, operator schema, input-output arguments, and operator granularity. The red table shows the execution trace node schema, where each node is a PyTorch operator. Each tensor in input-output arguments is tagged with a unique ID, tensor shape, and data type. In the case of PyTorch, the collection of execution traces can be achieved with minimal modifications to existing code. We have made these changes and merged them into the PyTorch mainline. You just need less than 10 lines of code to collect them. At Meta, we are actively collecting execution traces in the background every day. We also build analysis on top of PyTorch execution trace to understand performance problems. One use case is to understand collective metric size imbalance across different ranks. Collective metric size is calculated by adding all the input tensor size together as shown in the pseudocode. The bottom figure shows two examples of analyzing collective metric size imbalance across different ranks. The left one is a balanced one, while the right one shows a significant imbalance across different ranks during R2RV communication. Param replay allows us to replay collective operations from a trace. There are three stages in a replay. Before replaying, Prime will analyze the collective categories and message size distribution. Then Prime will replay the comps operations one by one following the collective order and collective size. After the replay, Prime will summarize the latency of each comps operation and each collective type. Param replay has multiple use cases. We can replay the comps operation to charge network issues, obtain the latency and bandwidth for performance tuning and analysis, as well as test the new infrastructure, topology, and routing design. To better study the impact of the compute and communication overlap, we recently added Compute's Replace Port to Prime Benchmark and published this work in ISCA 23. Benchmarking and hardware software co-design with execution traces are crucial for designing efficient distributed machine learning systems. It is necessary to enable the community to share lessons and build more efficient systems together. For this purpose, we extended Prime and execution trace and proposed the Chakra, a graph-based workload trace schema and its ecosystem. Chakra Working Group is now part of ML Commons. We identify three main challenges to scale existing benchmarks. First, a unified schema for machine learning model execution trace is missing. Chakra addresses this by providing an open graph schema. Second, the lack of tool chains for performance modeling. Chakra provides several tools for identifying bottlenecks and debugging issues. Last, current methodologies 
lack the ability to synthesize the traces. It is critical to let companies exchange execution traces while not revealing intellectual properties. Chakra, our fast case proprietary AI model details by synthesizing execution traces. This is the architecture of Chakra ecosystem. Execution traces can be collected from various machine learning frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow. As they have different execution trace formats, we convert them to the common Chakra schema with the ET converter. Chakra execution traces can be utilized for performance modeling purpose with simulators. As long as the simulator is Chakra compatible, execution traces can be used there. We also propose a generative machine learning model to generate execution traces that mimic the characteristics of the training workflow, but without revealing any proprietary information. Chakra also provides other open source tools, such as execution trace visualizer and timeline visualizer. A visualized example of Chakra execution trace is shown on the left. Nodes represent operators, and edges represent their dependencies. There are multiple types of nodes in a trace, and each node has additional metadata for performance modeling. Specifically, communication nodes have communication type and communication sizes. The execution trace visualizer visualizes operator's dependency, as shown on the top right. And the timeline visualizer provides valuable insights into the temporal aspects of model execution, as shown on the bottom right. Now let me summarize today's talk. To better understand a training job, it is necessary to capture a whole semantic view of the training stack from network to the workflow. We build Rocket to associate the job to RDMA network metrics and provide analysis on top. We also build prime benchmark to allow analyzing and tuning collective communications through execution trace and scale them to the community with Chakra for co-designing efficient distributed machine learning system. Finally, I would like to express my gratitude to all the collaborators from Meta, Georgia Tech, and Cornell, and also welcome to join these open source projects. Thank you.